Hey guys, this is Adam of Think Tank Technologies and today I'm going to be demonstrating a system that I have uh, coming up for sale. It's called uh, Sweet Vision. It's a uh, high definition video capture system uh, targeting uh, doctors who want to uh, capture video of uh, their patients um, while using um, uh, rigid or fiber endoscopes for their examinations. Uh, basically the system consists of uh, a high power laptop or uh, this is like a 17 inch uh, laptop uh, screen uh, or a 24 inch touchscreen interface um, that's available in a desktop uh, version. Um, this one obviously is great for portability. So um, what I'm going to do is bring up the software itself named Sweet Vision as I mentioned before. Uh, the first screen that comes up, it asks for a doctor's initials and then the patient's name, we'll say John Smith. And so with the uh, system itself, um, and the way it's set up, uh, the, the screen is, um, the camera view is going to be in the middle here uh, when we turn it on. Uh, the buttons are set up uh, to accommodate touchscreen interfaces as well as um, being easy to navigate uh, as well as tablets. It's also targeted for the tablet uh, devices in the, um, that are coming out in the future uh, as well, the Windows 8 systems. Uh, buttons on the left side here, you have the live view, um, remove mesh, I'll get into that in a second. Um, the viewing for the zooming and different actions that you can apply. I'm going to first turn on my uh, light source here. This light source is actually a xenon uh, replacement uh, plasma light source. And actually by default it goes up to 100 and that is way too powerful for our needs. So we can go all the way down to 30. This system was the first system that I custom built. It integrated a high definition video capture uh, computer system inside of it with that plasma light source. The plasma light source is actually the alternative to the xenon light source. It lasts 10 times longer. Uh, it does not have a high voltage um, component to it like the xenon and actually costs the same price. So that uh, technology you already are seeing in some light sources that are available to the communities out there who are not using the high brightness LEDs but um, it's, a, it's a great alternative for those who need even more brightness than the high brightness LEDs. So we got that down to 30% power. We're going to hit the live view here. And that live view is what we're seeing over here from this endoscope. I don't know if that's in frame there. Let's get that in frame. That's good. Okay. So, as you can see, uh, typical of fiberscopes, you have the mesh pattern that exists and it's uh, distracting to the subject in view. What my software does is that it, in real time, it applies an algorithmic filter that will recognize that mesh pattern and remove it. In removing it, it will then apply or recognize the um, the colors that uh, it averages out the colors that should be there below the mesh pattern. To apply that filter you just hit remove mesh. I'm toggling it on and off right now. If you're using a rigid endoscope you would not have the remove mesh clicked. Depending on the uh, the type of endoscope that you use, one that might have 10,000 fibers um, versus another that might have 50,000 fibers, you'd adjust the settings of the filter. With this pop-up window, I find that for my scope, which is actually 15 to 20 years old, the filter strength of 2.5 is good. And as you lower it, it will either make the mesh pattern more apparent or less apparent. In doing so though, you don't want to go too far because then you start to adjust the sharpness or change the sharpness of the picture itself. Okay. So from there, um, let's 
browse around a little bit here. So right now I'm just going to take the inside of my hand. What's nice is that this camera has the ability to uh, adjust the gain uh, and the exposure so the sensor won't be oversaturated. You could create a max value uh, dependent on your light source. You also have the white balancing available. And also there is an option for color enhancement. But I find that there's no need to use that with this. Especially with the white light light source. Okay, from there you can see the ridges on the hand. Very good uh, picture quality. So what we're going to do now is hit record video here. Yeah. Already filled in is the name of the doctors, or excuse me, the initials of the doctor as well as the name of the patient that you punched in earlier. You hit save. And so now it's recording straight to disk. The disk is a solid state hard drive which is five times faster than the traditional platter hard drives that used to be used. As such, there's no lag in the recording or the playback. Moving around here. Okay. And the recording time is limited by the space you have left on your hard drive. So it can go on for a pretty long time. You can actually see the ridges of where the uh, fingerprints are taken from. Okay, when you're done recording, you just press that button again. It stops recording. Let's see. That's good. Okay, so when we hit open folder, we see the video that we captured, the one that was recorded. We double click that, and then it starts to become played back in our preview screen. And you're able to see the details that you want to focus on. From there, you're able to save the image. Let's pause it here. You could find a good image there for for reference for your archives. And from there, you could uh, save the image. You could print the image to your printer or to a PDF file. You could copy the image. By doing so it saves it to Windows Clipboard and from there you're able to create a document and insert that image into it. Possibly for your uh, patient files. Let's say in like a Word document or, uh, or an electronic medical record might offer the ability to paste the image in there. And then you're able to also trim the video down. So let's say you don't want to have a 2 gigabyte file and you want to shorten it down to a specific time. You hit the trim video and then it automatically fills in trim in there and you hit save.
Okay, and then in the playback screen you now have the trimmed shorter video. We're going to minimize this. We're going to go to our folder where we save that. And here they are. Both your full uh, capture, your trimmed capture, and then your frame. Here's that one frame that we saw. With the fiberscope filtering applied. Here's the trim. Frames per second there needs to be adjusted though. That's, that's a bug that will be worked out in the next week. And then you have the full capture here, the full video. And what we're able to do is actually create a contact sheet. A sheet of all the thumbnails that were seen um, every, for this it might be every five seconds it's going to take it. So it's processing it there, and then it's saved. So now, when we open that up, you actually have a nice contact sheet of all the different images that you saw during the video. From there you're also able to move in, zoom in, and you can imagine with a nice 24 inch touch screen you're able to navigate around and look at each picture that you want you have side by side comparisons okay. okay okay and that uh, concludes our short demonstration of Sweet Vision's abilities. Thank you for watching.